Okay, this is a cute question. Um, we're comparing the up thrust received by the ice block when it's fully submerged compared to when it's floating. The first thing we notice is that um, when it's fully submerged, the ice block uh, displaces more water compared to when it's floating, when it's only partially submerged. Since up thrust is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced, um, straight away we can tell that um, the up thrust in the first case here is larger than the up thrust when it's uh, partially submerged. So straight away we can already tell that um, the ratio is going to be larger than 1. Um, but let's just figure out the exact ratio here. Okay, um, as we said, up thrust is equal to the weight of this fluid displaced here. So the weight of this amount of water here can be written as the density of water times this volume of water which is of course equals to the volume of the ice block. So there we have it, the up thrust uh, in this situation here. Now in the second situation, the up thrust is equals to the weight of this smaller amount of fluid here. But since the ice block is floating now, we also know that this up thrust here must be equal to the weight of the ice block. That's why the ice block is floating, because the up thrust it receives uh, from the water is exactly equal to the to, to its own weight. So for the second up thrust here, we are going to write it as equals to the weight of the ice, which can be written as the density of the ice block times the ice of the ice block times g of course. So let's put these two into this uh, equation here. So what we have is this. The volume of ice and g of course can be cancelled away. So the ratio of the up thrust turns out to be the ratio of the densities. If we put in the numbers we get 1.1. .1. Interesting, huh?